the last five days, Long Beach Police Department detectives have been working around the clock to identify the criminal responsible for this terrible crime. I'm extremely proud of all the employees of our police department for their teamwork and professionalism in the handling of this case. I also want to thank our community for their support and involvement and all the city department for their assistance to this tragic incident. Tonight, we have had a major break in the case. We will provide the details shortly, but first I would like to introduce the Vice Mayor of the City of Long Beach, Vice Mayor Bowler. Thank you, good evening. First of all, I want to send my prayers and thoughts uh, and condolences to the Ross family, a community, a family that lives in North Long Beach, my community, my district. It saddens my heart to, whenever anything like this happens. I want to thank the police department for the great work they've done. I want to tell you that the city of Long Beach is a city that is constantly working to eliminate crime within the city. And I want to thank the detectives for the hard work and the, the speed that they found this suspect. It is a great honor that I live in this city and work with these police officers. I thank you very much. And again, my prayers and thoughts for the Ross family. Good evening. I'm Councilmember Gary DeLong. I never had a doubt that our world-class police department, Long Beach's finest, would catch these criminals who did this act. I just came from Wilson High School where memorial service was, and there was a family, and I know that this is going to help them bring closure as we move forward. And I also want to thank the detectives and the entire force that have worked around the clock since this event occurred to catch the criminals. But rightly, I think the next question from the community will be, what's next? And for me, what's next? It is time for the leadership of Long Beach to pull together that we need to send a message to those criminal elements, those gang members. You're not wanted in Long Beach. You're not welcome in Long Beach. And we will make your life miserable every day that you're here. Thank you. Right, good evening. My name is Chris Steinhauser. I'm the superintendent of schools at the Long Beach Unified Schools. And on behalf of the Board of Education, I too want to express my condolences to Mel Lee's family. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to publicly thank Mayor Foster, the entire city council, and especially our fine police department for committing all their resources to bring um, the situation um, to an end. What is so important is that we live in a great city that cares deeply about the community. We have received hundreds of phone calls from individuals seeing how can they help Melody's family? So I'd like to give a, an address out for those who would like to help with Melody's um, account. We have set up an account for Melody and her family through the Long Beach Education Foundation at 1515 Hughes Way, Long Beach, California, 90810. And again, I want to thank the entire city of Long Beach and their, their family here because as a superintendent, there's no other place I want to work because I know we have the resources to protect our students. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bill Blair, and I'm the Deputy Chief of Investigations for the Long Beach Police Department. Tonight's briefing, the purpose is to give you an overview of the case and to announce the arrests that we have made in the tragic death of 16-year-old Wilson High School student, Melody Ross. Last Friday night, October 30th, at about 10 p.m., the Long Beach Police Department responded to a shooting call in the 800 block of Examino Avenue, uh, just out front of Wilson High School. The high school football game had just concluded and uh, crowds were leaving the event. When our officers arrived, they found that there were three victims that had been shot. Two males, 18 and 20 years old, received non-life-threatening injuries. Melody Ross, however, suffered a very, very traumatic life-threatening gunshot wound. Melody was treated at the scene, transported to a local hospital. Heroic efforts by the emergency room staff to try to revive her were unsuccessful, and Melody lost her life. The initial investigation by these detectives and officers that responded involved a crowd of over four or 500 people leaving this game. Two groups of rival gang members were amongst uh, members of that crowd. A dispute occurred, a confrontation happened, and one of the members of one of these groups drew a handgun and fired indiscriminately into the crowd, 
causing three people to be hit, Melody one of them. By all accounts, Melody was an innocent bystander, not the intended victim, no gang involvement. The two other subjects struck by gunfire fled the area very quickly, however were located by patrol officers, treated and released. This case has been very tough, very, very tough investigation from the onset. On the night of the incident, detectives only had six witnesses that came forward to help them in their endeavor to solve the case. Our detectives have worked nonstop since this event happened at 10 o'clock last Friday night in order to be, to be here in front of you today to talk about these arrests. Close work with our school officials has resulted in bringing forward several more witnesses after Monday morning's meeting at the school that helped us with valuable information and making an identification of the suspects involved. Today that I am pleased to, to announce that detectives from the Long Beach Police Department have arrested suspects that we believe are responsible for the murder of Melanie Ross and the attempted murder of an 18 and 20 year old male at that event. These suspects who have been arrested are both juveniles. I am unable to release their names to you by law. I will tell you, however, that they are a 16 year old male of Long Beach and a 16 year old male from the city of Bellflower. The detectives are still out in the field as we speak looking for additional suspects in connection with this case. Detectives from our homicide detail will be meeting with the district attorney first thing tomorrow morning to file the case on the two minors that we have in custody. Again, this case could not have been solved without the hard work and combined efforts of our community, the school officials, and the exceptional work by the Long Beach detectives. I need to thank Supervisor Don Canabi's office of our district for his gracious award of $20,000 by the Board of Supervisors which no doubt will help us in the final resolution of this case. The homicide de detectives from the Long Beach Police Department are looking for any additional witnesses who can come forward to help us in the prosecution of this case. We're asking that anyone that has information come forward, call the Long Beach Police Department homicide detail at area code 562-570-7244. The handling detectives are Scott Lash and Malcolm Evans. And with that, I'll be, answered, be happy to answer some quick questions. And again, I will tell you, I have personnel that are out in the field. This case is continuing to evolve. The rest of the case were made just within the last several hours. So there's not a lot that I will be able to answer at this point. Chief, which of the teens is the shooter? The, the youth from Bellflower or the youth from Long Beach? I'm or not going to give you the answer to that yet, Tracy, because we're still sorting that out. Can you talk a little bit more about the, uh, how, how you were led to the two individuals aside from witness accounts? Uh, witness accounts uh, and evidence that we were able to collect the scene that connected us. Uh, again, help from the school district, uh, parents, as well as uh, students coming forward. Is the 16-year-old Long Beach uh, student a student at Wilson? Uh, well, we have not determined that yet. And in fact, we're still trying to make sure uh, which schools these uh, minors may attend. It does not appear at this point that either student attended uh, Wilson or Poly High School. <coughs> From, uh, where the uh, football game was that evening. Chief, can you say which gangs are involved? Uh, we do not identify the gangs other than to say that they're both local Long Beach Street gang members. Chief, can you describe how you believe this came about? Was it a group of gang members, including these two you've arrested, came to the game specifically to engage in a confrontation with another gang? I don't think that we've completely determined yet, uh, other than the fact that they were at the football game that night. Uh, and saw one another within the crowd, and from that, a dispute and confrontation occurred. Again, the detectives are still at the very, very uh, beginning of interviews with the suspects that we have in custody, and we will learn more information as the night goes on. When Homicide files the case with the DA tomorrow, are they going to ask them to try them as adults? Uh, that'll be up to the detectives and the handling district attorney to make that determination based on the age. Were the two wounded males the intended targets, either of them? Again, uh, we're still investigating this, it would appear so, uh, however, until we actually sit down and, and find out everything that we have and the folks we have in custody tonight, uh, we'll have a better picture of what that looks like. 